three, two, one. Hi there, my name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market in Delhi. Tonight's presenter, we have Stacy Cracker. She is the one of the uh, Hummingbird Wholesale representatives, and she is going to be enlightening us with some wonderful information tonight. Stacy, take the live stream floor. Thanks, Elizabeth. I'm so excited to be here. Marlene's has been a longtime partner of Hummingbird Wholesale um, and customer. And just, um, I just want to say thank you and just appreciate your whole team and the opportunity to present. So um, as Elizabeth said, my name is Stacy Crocker. Um, I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Hummingbird Wholesale. I'm also a longtime bulk aisle shopper, and I would even go so far as to say that I'm an enthusiast. Um, I'm gonna start today by introducing our company, Hummingbird Wholesale, and then I'm gonna talk a bit about our sustainability practices. Um, what better day to do that than today, right? Since it is Earth Day. Um, and, you know, sustainability really is at the heart of everything we do. Um, I'm also going to share some tips and tricks on shopping the bulk aisle, um, ways that you can make it easier and also hopefully make it fun, um, because if it isn't fun, then it just feels like a chore. Um, I just want to say I also want this to be a conversation. I um, want folks to jump in and ask questions, um, and I think the best way to do that is to put them in the chat. And then when we have time, um, I've built in some time pause for us to address the questions. And if you, if you would like, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and speak up um, if you'd like to ask your question. Otherwise, I am completely fine. Just Elizabeth and I can um, read your questions out of the chat and I'll answer to the best of my ability. So a little bit about Hummingbird. Um, we are a wholesale um, distributor and manufacturer of organic food. We're based in Eugene, Oregon, and we really pride ourselves on our farm direct relationships with farmers, particularly in the Pacific Northwest and the US, but we also source products from around the world. And um, like I said, we like to work farm direct as much as possible. And mostly we focus on bulk and grocery foods. We are a mission-driven company, and our mission, what that means to us is that our mission drives our decision-making in, in all aspects of our business. So I'm going to read you our Hummingbird mission because I feel really proud of it, um, but I also think it does a good job of, of explaining what it is that we do and why we do it. We offer organic high quality, nutritious foods grown as locally and sustainably as possible. And what that means to us, especially when we say as locally and sustainably as possible, it means that um, we know not everything can be grown right next door, right? So sometimes um, some of the, the best products um, the best version of a product or it's grown in, in the best region is not going to be from right next door, but we're looking to source it from as close to us as possible. One example of this would be our dried mango um, that comes from Mexico. And I think all of us at Hummingbird and many of our customers would, would stand up and say that it's the best dried mango available. Um, and so that's you know, that doesn't grow here in Oregon or Washington. Um, and, you know, really the best version of it's going to come from Mexico, in our opinion, because that's as close um, to home as possible. Next, we take great care and pride in creating long term mutually beneficial relationships. So for us, from the relationship from um, the farmer to our coworkers at Hummingbird to our customers, is we're looking to have a sustained relationship. We're not looking for um, what is the, gonna be the easiest or the cheapest or the fastest way to do something. Instead, we're looking for a holistic approach to doing business. We want everybody up and down the supply chain to um, feel like they're taken care of and that um, 
that at the end of the day, it's more than just a business exchange, that we're developing friendships and relationships, and together we're developing a better food system for the future. And then lastly, I, I think again, most appropriately for Earth Day, like the hummingbird, we seek to sip the nectar of the flower without, uh, of the earth without harming the flower. So as I said earlier, uh, sustainability is really at the heart of all we do at Hummingbird. Our sustainability efforts and our commitment to continuous improvement in our business practices extend from the field to the table. Um, from our rooftop solar electric system to our low emissions trucks and local bike delivery, which I'll actually show you a picture in just a moment. Um, and our commitment to sourcing products grown as close to our facilities as possible. And also our high ethics for, for sourcing practices include organic, non-GMO and fairly traded as well. And part of that is that farm direct relationship I talked about earlier and transparent origin labeling. So a lot of the products that we sell, um, we're not actually required to say exactly where they come from, but to us at Hummingbird, it's really important that we share that for one, because we're proud, but two, we know that you as the end eater of the product wanna know where your food comes from. And so not only will we say if something is US sourced or Mexico sourced, we might even go so far as to get granular and tell you if it comes from Oregon or Washington. So you know when you're purchasing a product that Hummingbird brought to Marlene's, for instance, um, exactly where it's coming from. We also may wanna make sure that all of our products are helpful for people, planet, and mutual beneficial prosperity. Um, and then it's really important to us that we give back to our community. So I wanna tell you about a big audacious goal that we have, and that is that we will be part of transforming agriculture to 100% organic. And we um, go so far as to say, we're gonna start with Oregon and the West Coast, um, but eventually we hope that all of the world is farming organically. <laughs> and one of the ways that we do that um, is we give back. Like I mentioned, we give back to our community. Um, so we look to support organic organizations and nonprofits, farmers, and organic education and research programs, um, as well as local food programs in Oregon and Washington. In fact, last year in 2020, we gave over 5% of our profits um, back to communities in Oregon and Washington. So my question to you all is, what does sustainability mean to you? So if you have an answer, go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, and then we, we can talk about that. In the meantime, while you're doing it, I'm gonna share this picture. This is Carl. It's one of our longtime Hummingbird coworkers and an avid biker. Um, Carl wears many hats at Hummingbird. He does IT, he works in our warehouse and does delivery um, on, and this is, is the trike that he drives around Eugene locally. So obviously we aren't able to deliver um, to Marlene's with the trike because that's a long distance to go from Eugene. But I just wanted to share that this is an important part of our sustainability efforts um, is that when we can, in our local community, we're using two of these trikes to deliver around town. And so you'll see the back, there's this um, container where the food is, is the orders that go to customers locally, restaurants and retailers um, gets loaded in there. And it actually can carry about a thousand pounds. Um, and the trikes were built just for us. And so um, the weight and the way that it's distributed and it's also an electric assist that is um, self electrifying by pedaling um, that Carl and our other um, trike delivery folks are able to do that um, safely and efficiently. So Elizabeth, did we get any, any response on what sustainability means? I just, uh, realized I was muted. Um, <laughs> so um, there isn't any in the chat box. Um, and I was just checking Facebook. 
and um, I didn't see any response, but I know for me what um, so sustainability means for me is the um, where the carbon footprint is lessened with me doing the, this action or activity where I'm not making that much of an impact negatively in the world. Mm -hmm. That's great. And yeah, and that's exactly our philosophy too, is, uh, you know, we obviously need to do business and there is some impact that we all have, but how can we reduce that impact? And maybe in our efforts of giving back, we um, make up for some of that in good ways. You know, another thing that we do is um, in our local community, we um, volunteer with a group called Friends of Trees and they plant trees in neighborhoods and um, in riparian zones and things like that. And so not only do we support that organization, but we've actually hosted volunteer events um, to go out and plant trees. And planting trees mitigates carbon because trees, you know, um, help us um, create oxygen and pull carbon out of the atmosphere. So that's another example of a way as a business, we know, I mean, we are, we're driving low emission trucks and certainly as our product is getting trucked up the road to us or coming on a boat across the sea, some emissions are happening, but these are ways that we can, you know, um, help mitigate that impact. So that's great. Thanks, Elizabeth. And then um, one more thing on our sustainability, I just wanted to talk about because I think it's a pretty exciting um, program and it's one that Marlene's has been participating in from the beginning. And that's our co container return and reuse program. This is an award-winning program and it's unique in the industry. Um, we, what we do in collaboration with our customers is we pack our bulk products and in reusable food grade deposit return containers. So these are buckets, jugs um, with um, food safe plastic or glass and um, retailers pay a refundable deposit on the container. So um, when for instance, Marlene would place, Marlene's places an order for um, our awakened almonds, they come in a bucket and the bulk department um, workers will pour that into the bulk bin and then they'll send the bucket back and they get the deposit back um, as a credit or in, a, in the form of a check. So it's a closed loop system. And then we reuse those buckets and containers multiple times. So since 2003, we have um, reused over 125,000 pounds of plastic containers and over 93,000 pounds of glass containers keeping them out of the waste stream. So that's something we're really, really proud about. Um, and I just wanna take, put a little plug in um, because when we think about that concept of reduce, reuse, recycle, that really it's the reduce and the reuse part of it that's the most practical and the most important. I think in the last few years, all of us have become aware of how um, plastic really doesn't get recycled um, very often. It's really, difficult and costs, it's costly. And as a result, um, you know, there's a lot of plastic that piles up in the landfills. So this is one of the ways that we're trying to reduce the amount that goes back. And, um, and we couldn't do it without partners like Marlene's. So it's, we're really excited about it. And then Elizabeth, did you want to say something? I think you're on mute. I sure am. Thank you so much for all you do um, in the community and um, just bringing good, sustainable, clean food in into the, the world here in the Pacific Northwest and hopefully bring in that organic gardening beyond. Thank you. Yeah. And like I said, we couldn't do it without partners like Marlene's. Um, Marlene's commitment to sustainability and to supplying organic food to the communities in Washington are, is just invaluable. And, um, and it's great if that's what we, when we talk about long-term beneficial relationships, um, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. So this slide is just an example of the container return program. It's really similar to the bottle return programs that I think we're all familiar with. Um, and so it's along the same lines, but it, we, told, we manage this completely 
on our own in our own facility. And so containers um, get returned to us and we wash them and, um, and then refill them with like items. So um, it's a pretty, um, pretty neat program that we run. So next, I'm going to jump into um, talking about buying in the bulk department and how fun it can be. And the way the best way to kick this off, I thought, was to share a really fun video that we um, created at Hummingbird a few years back. This was developed by um, some of our marketing team members. And you'll see this um, woman that is right on the front here is Tanya. And she just walks through a, a local bulk, bulk department here in Eugene. Um, and she's definitely having a really good time as you'll see. So I'll just play this um, to kick us off. Hmm. I'm wondering why the audio isn't working. So, sorry, uh, Elizabeth, you just said there's no audio coming through? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can figure that out. Because without the audio, it's just not even half as fun. Yeah, because it has all like the you could feel her excitement. I mean, you could, yeah. you could still see it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so let me see. Um, hmm. Interesting, because I'm hearing it in my headphone. And hmm. I know that um, we had a similar thing happen a few presentations ago. And um, when I opened up, opened it up in PowerPoint, the audio was there and I was like, huh, but during the presentation, we couldn't hear it. So um, there's some there's some things with rolling with the yeah. tides of change here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, then um, I'll just jump into uh, explaining some of what you were saying in the video, which, you know, we really in that wanted to make it fun, but also to talk about some of the basic benefits of buying in bulk. Um, what I call why I love the bulk department. Um, so, you know, one of the biggest reasons I think to shop in, uh, to shop in bulk is because it, the bulk department really has all the ingredients that you need to make or bake or create any food that um, you wouldn't get in a fresh produce department, basically. So um, it's a great place to get, just like get everything that you need um, and to get high quality food. Um, oftentimes in a bulk department, you're gonna find um, local, organic, fresh and simple ingredients. So you know exactly what you're buying and what you're putting in your body. You also have the opportunity to save money um, in a bulk department. Um, you pay less for the best, but you don't pay extra for packaging and the marketing that goes into a retail package product that you find on the shelf. It's also the added benefit of less food waste because you buy only what you need. So this is really a key tenant of buying, um, shopping the bulk aisle. Um, I found this statistic that says that in the United States, we waste about 80 billion pounds of food per year or what equals about 200 pounds per person. That turns out to be roughly 30% of the US food supply. Um, and when we waste food, we also waste all of the energy that goes into growing the food, to transporting it, 
and then packaging it and getting it to the store. And so this really is, isn't just an environmental or social concern, it's humanitarian concern. So when you buy in the bulk department, you're buying exactly what you need. Um, and knowing that you, if you, if you want to try something new, you can do that, but you're not investing in a whole pre-packed version of it. And so I ask to uh, folks who are here on, on the Zoom with us or who are joining by Facebook, is what do you love about shopping the bulk aisle? Or if, if you think that it's a challenging experience, what do you find challenging? Or what kinds of questions could I answer um, by the end of this presentation that might help it go uh, easier for you? So I'll come back to that if we get any um, responses. So I'm going to share some tips um, um, to make buying in bulk easy and fun. First, um, it might seem like a no brainer, but make a list. We all know that shopping is easier and faster if we have a list when we go into the store. But it, I'm actually surprised at how many people I meet who don't make a list ahead of time and um, spend time wandering around the store, wondering what they're gonna find. Um, and certainly there can be some fun of that, right? The adventure of you know, you know, seeing something new and grabbing it. But if we go in with a list, we feel better prepared. And it's um, even more important with bulk shopping. Whether it's your first bulk experience or it's your umpteenth time, um, I have just found that the more prepared I am, the easier it is. And I'll even sometimes go in um, because I really like cooking and I like trying out new recipes is I'll go and maybe I'm buying an ingredient that I don't normally have on hand, but it's something new to me. I'll get exactly what I need for that recipe. And that way I'm not stuck with something that maybe it doesn't turn out and I don't think I'm gonna make it again. or um, I know that I want it to be really fresh. And so if I'm gonna make it again, I wanna go and, and get it when I need it. And I don't wanna store it. We don't all have you know, uh, big pantries where we can store everything. Um, so um, having you know, just a small amount of something on hand is a great way to, to have a, a good experience. Also in the bulk department, you get a chance to really peruse what else is there. You get to see it, it's, it's open, but you, it's a, in a clear container, you get to see exactly what the product looks like and you, you can judge whether or not you really think that it's, um, is it fresh enough? Is it, is it attractive enough? Is it really what you're looking for? And that's a really cool experience because again, so often in packaged goods, you don't get to actually see what's in there. Um, and so you get to look at it. And then, you know, you, this is the fun part is you had that list, right? But you also can try out that new thing. And it's really uh, you, low investment. You know, you're just maybe that, look at that nut or that seed or that granola or dried fruit that you've never tried before. And you just get to try, just buy a little bit of it, and take it home. And so um, I think that's one of the, the most exciting things that's really fun about buying in bulk. So, you know, once you've decided what you're going to purchase, you want to fill your bag or container with the amount that you need and then make sure to write that PLU number or the bin number on the label. This will make it easier when you're checking out. Um, and then another tip that I, that I like to give because it's something I, I have um, learned to do from making mistakes, which is write the name of the product on there if you can, because sometimes they look alike. Like I've come home before with salt and some other seasoning that look exactly the same and went to, uh, in fact, went to make a dip that had garlic powder and instead added a bunch of salt and it was terrible. Um, but this, this could be even with oats, if we have rolled oats and rolled barley look very similar. So just writing that name on there um, it could help at checkout too, if maybe one of the numbers in the PLU um, isn't as clear, um, having the name of the product on there will be helpful um, at checkout as well. But then when you get it home, you know exactly what you brought home and um, you can label your own containers at home with what, what you've got. Another tip I like to give is, um, I'm gonna show you the next slide and then we'll go back, but um, these are the bin labels. Um, and so Hummingbird supplies these bin labels to Marlene's 
So with this, you get to see that it's a hummingbird product. You get to read the ingredients. You know where it came from. This product is manufactured in Oregon. You get the nutrition facts. And in some cases, this one, it just gives a little background about the flavor of the product, but you might actually found cooking instructions. So one thing that I like to do is take a photo with my phone of the bin label, if it, especially if there are cooking instructions, because then when I get it home, I don't have to look it up again. Um, so that's just one additional tip that I find to be really helpful. And then lastly, um, when you get home, I, I call this having the right, sorry about that, the right container plus the right storage equals shelf life. And so this is really important when you're purchasing in bulk um, you may, you know, for instance, you go into the store and now because of COVID, um, we're, you know, most of the time, most stores aren't allowing us to bring in our own reusable containers. So we're bringing something home in either a plastic bag or a paper bag that's supplied at the store. Um, but I just want to, one little side note is I want to suggest that that's still less packaging than buying pre-packed goods because um, you think about that granola you buy in a box, it's a bag inside of a box. And not only you're paying for that packaging, that's the extra packaging that each person is taking home, as opposed to, um, you know, in the case of buying a hummingbird product, we're sending that in a reusable bucket, Marlene's is dumping it into the bulk bin, and then you're using a plastic bag to get it home. That's still way less packaging. And hopefully someday we'll get back to the point where we can use our reusable containers in the store. But in the meantime, when you get home, having a variety of different storage containers is key to having successful storage of your bulk goods. So I was just gonna show some of my own containers and you will maybe get a chuckle out of some of them. For instance, I sometimes reuse other jars. This used to be a salsa jar <laughs> from a local company. And I put my peppercorns in here. Um, and so this is a way to reuse, I'm reusing a jar that I cleaned at home and then I'm putting my peppercorns in there. Another is, um, especially with dried fruit because dried fruit can, can tend to stick together, doesn't work as well in a glass jar. I actually will use a, a sealable plastic bag, um, but I often reuse these for similar products. This is actually that mango I was talking about earlier. It's my favorite and you can see there's a, it's a big bag because my family eats a lot of it. And dried fruit can sometimes keep better if you keep it in a refrigerator um, or even a freezer over time if you're gonna keep something for a long time. And then this is my flour. It's a big jar because uh, I like to do baking. Um, but flour is one of those things that isn't as shelf stable as you might think. So if you're actually going to buy a lot of flour and you don't plan to use it right away, it's a good idea to uh, keep it in the refrigerator. So I think a good rule of thumb is if you're not going to use it within about a month, you might want to keep it in your fridge or even a freezer. Um, I go through it quite a bit, so I just use this big container. This is another example of a really good jar. Oh, Elizabeth got her jars too. Awesome. Um, and I like these. This one doesn't have anything in it right now, but um, I like these because it really is um, airtight and it has this rubber seal on it. Um, so this works for things that maybe aren't as shelf stable. Um, I like, really like that jar. And then this is a huge jar of pinto beans. My family, we eat a lot of pinto beans. Um, so I just always have this giant jar. So you'll see it's good to have a variety of different sizes. These, this is my chia seed um, and lids. And reusing jars like you get some spaghetti sauce, wash out that jar and keep it and use it um, for your bulk goods. So it's just another way to you know, be light on the earth and, um, and have some fun. And I actually think my pantry looks amazing with all these glass jars in it. You know, I totally feel the same, Stacey. It's like your own food apothecary shelves. It's like, yay, look how pretty they are. And I could see exactly all the levels. Oh, I'm gonna need more pinto beans soon. You know, you, you get to, and it makes it easier to create a list and you get that routine down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's really fun. And oftentimes I, um, friends who would come over and see my pantry, they would just be like, oh my gosh, look at everything you've got in here, the variety of things um, and just a bunch of different sizes so that I'm not, you know, big jars of the things that I know I eat a lot of and smaller jars for um, spices and, um, you know, things that I don't like. I have a big jar of sesame seed right now, but um, normally I keep this in a much smaller jar because sesame seed isn't something you use a ton of. So um, those are just some of the tips. Um, like I said, um, this is the um, bin label that I mentioned earlier. And then to wrap it up, I wanted to just talk about um, some specialty products that you can find in bulk that, that Hummingbird produces. So I'm gonna talk about our organic awakened nuts. And the reason I'm gonna talk about these today is because we actually have a special um, uh, upcoming um, event in May with Marlene's, um, with the awakened nuts um, that I'll tell you more about. But I just wanna talk, this is an example of some of the specialty items you can find in bulk. And I say it because I think most of us think of bulk as being the place where you get your staple goods. You know, you get your beans and your rice, maybe some sugar and flour, um, but there's also a plethora of opportunities to try new and exciting things. And at Hummingbird, we have our awakened line. We, um, and in particular, our nuts. So what the heck does awakened mean? <laughs> well, uh, awakened is our term for sprouted. And um, sprouted, um, seeds and nuts and grains are really all the rage. And it's because people are realizing that they are healthier, they're easier to digest, and that they actually have a more delicious flavor. So um, we take our awakened nuts and their seeds and we soak them overnight in water, um, which initiates germination. And then um, we dehydrate them. And because of that process of soaking and dehydrating, I think our nuts have this particularly amazing crunch to them. This process of awakening um, reduces enzyme inhibitors and increases digestibility, which improves the absorption of nutrients in the product. Um, and so they're actually a really excellent choice for people who want to have a healthy lifestyle and for folks who have sensitive stomachs. Um, nuts can be hard to digest, particularly raw nuts, um, but when we sprout them, when we awaken the nut and then dehydrate them, they're actually way easier to digest and, um, and then you'll actually get more absorption of the nutrients in there. So I'm gonna tell you about the, the three particular nuts that we're really excited about. These are our awakened pecans. And just this year, um, we were honored to receive a good food award for these awakened pecans. Um, what this means is that a panel of foodie judges tried these and thought that they were outstanding in the nut category. We also have awakened walnuts. And I have to say, the pecans are amazing, but these walnuts are my personal favorite. And I'll tell you why. Um, walnuts often have this very um, strong tannin um, bitterness to them almost. And um, after taking our walnuts through the awakened process, that is almost entirely eliminated. And they just have the sweetest nutty flavor. Um, if you, I would say if you're normally somebody who does not like walnuts, I would encourage you to try these because they are delicious. And then lastly, I wanted to share our awakened almonds. So these awakened almonds were actually the beginning of our awakened product line. They were the first nut that we awakened and they are a longtime customer favorite. Um, we have folks who um, try them because they're visiting out here on the West Coast and they reach out to us later and wish that we could ship them across the country. Um, these are really one of our most popular products. And um, just this past year, uh, or a year ago, 
um, at the beginning of 2020, we launched a package snack line. So these, all of these nuts are also available in a grab and go six ounce um, pack. So you can find them in the bulk department at Marlene's and you can also find them in these grab and go packs. And so this is the exciting thing I wanted to share is that in May, Marlene's is running a special promotion on the Awaken nuts and they'll be 30% off. So if you haven't already tried them, it's a perfect time, uh, low investment, buy, some, buy a small amount in bulk. Um, you'll also get 30% off. Um, but if you have tried them and you already love them, what a great time to stock up and fill that big jar that you see on the screen there. <laughs> That is a great price. I know I'm going to be stopping in the Marlene's bulk department for some. Those are delicious. Great. Yeah. And so that'll be running in May. And um, I just wanted to end and say thank you. This is our hummingbird crew. Um, this photo, I just want to, as a um, caveat, is that this was taken um, before uh, the pandemic started in 2020, when we could still all get really close to each other without masks um, and took a photo, a full group photo in front of one of our trucks. And so you'll see our truck side says organic food on a mission. And that's just coming full circle to what I said in the beginning is that we are truly a mission driven company. And um, I think at Hummingbird Wholesale, um, Earth Day really is every day. You know, we hear marketers say this all the time. Um, but at Hummingbird, it really is true that, that this is how we approach business. So thank you. Thank you, Stacy. This is wonderful. And what a fabulous day to have you. Earth Day. That was perfect. Um, just the, the earth giving thanks and we have to give thanks to the earth in, um, in that same regard. So thank you for your time today. Um, folks, if you got any questions, feel free to ask, and then um, I can let Stacy know. Um, but um, so, Stacy, um, how how long um, can you refresh my memory? And um, how long has Hummingbird been around? Since 1972, and um, has gone through different iterations. Our current owners, um, Charlie and Julie Tilt bought the company in uh, 2003 and changed the name to Hummingbird Wholesale. It, it started off called Honey Heaven. And that was because the focus was on um, sourcing and selling local honey. And when Charlie and Julie bought the company, they decided to expand the product line um, and particularly focused on that farm direct um, relationship that I talked about. So contracting with local farmers to grow um, beans and grains because the Willamette Valley where we're located in Eugene um, used to be a prime growing reason, region for beans and grains and had over the last you know, 50 years started to be a place where grass seed was largely grown in place of it. And so when they took over the company, they really wanted to work with farmers to transition back to food crops. And, um, and so have had some great success with, um, you know, with local growers um, on beans and grains. Um, and also were instrumental in starting a local grain miller because there wasn't a grain miller locally who could really manage or handle the processing of small, um, smaller lots or smaller farms. So um, worked with Camas Country uh, Mills to um, develop that mill and we still work with them today. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Wow, so they, they really helped bring back the farming culture back to the area of the Willamette Valley. That's so beautiful, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Go hummingbird. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited. I'm glad to see you so excited about it because I know I am and all of us who work um, at Hummingbird are very excited about what we do and um, just so glad to be part of the food community here in the Pacific Northwest. Well, thank you for all you do. Um, if there's no more questions, uh, we are going to stop the live stream. 
But um, Stacy, is there any way for folks to get in touch with you if they have any direct questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you can find our website, hummingbirdwholesale.com. And if you have any questions, you can send an email to info at hummingbirdwholesale.com. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you folks for tuning in and have a wonderful, wonderful Earth Day. Happy spring. Thank you, Stacy, And um, everyone has a wonderful weekend.